Hi guys, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this episode, we're going to do some practical application of some lighting techniques on how I was able to create these specific images. So as you guys saw in the images, I'll be tackling today how I would shoot indoor with my speed light, outdoor with my speed light, and at night using some continuous light. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so as I said earlier, this is the equipment that I use. This is the Magmod 24-inch um, Octobank with two F45 RMs installed to it. So why am I using two? Mainly because I didn't want to overpower the flash, meaning I didn't want it to be at full power when I was shooting indoor so that it would make my recycle time faster. And the moment I went outdoor, I would need two flash units anyway. So I started my first layout this way. So for this layout, if you notice, I'm a few feet below her because she is already by the stairs. And I normally don't shoot this way in order to avoid some distortion, especially if I'm shooting ultra wide. But I decided to change my lens into a zoom lens, had my light over here and shot upwards toward her to give her this uh, majestic look, which was fitting for them since they were beauty queens and it turned out like this. So I shot this, I think, with, yeah, I shot this with an 85 millimeter, put in the background, compressed the background with a zoom lens. And this is the, you know, the first layout. So normally my first layouts are the getting to know each other stages. But in this particular shoot, my first layout, I went immediately to, to one of the key shots that we needed to do for the shoot. So from this one, after this particular, after this particular shot, I decided to get a stool to bring myself up to her level. And then I started playing around with the modifier being at her, at her eye level also, which personally I didn't like. So I asked my assistant to go up the stairs again, as you can see here. And this was the BTS of the actual shot. And I changed my, I changed my lens now to an ultra wide, which is a Zeiss Batis 18 millimeter 2.8. And this was the output. So if I put my light right here, it would have been very difficult to remove in post unless I shot another frame. But by doing that, then I would have to put a tripod. So it was a lot of effort. Plus I didn't like the fall off of the light. Um, it was too close to her, which gave me a bit, uh, a lot of contrast. That's why I asked my assistant to go somewhere here, just to give a natural fall of the light towards her and removing more of that contrast, even if the light was a bit harsher. Since I, shoot, I wasn't shooting a tight portrait, harsh light is very acceptable to be able to give the shape of the subject. So after I got that specific layout already indoor, we decided to do some outdoor shots while the sun was still out, which, which we thought was still out. But then the moment we went out of the hotel again with our luck, the sun disappeared behind some clouds, which gave us really flat lighting. But as I said in previous videos, flat lighting is good for portraits because it gives you nice soft light. But the downside to that is you lose the contrast between highlights and shadows and the true tone of your subject, which is your proper exposure. So this is when I would actually add my light either as my main light or my kicker light in order to give that depth using the differences between your shadows, highlights, and your, and your properly exposed value. But at this, in this scene, I'm already going to tell you guys, um, I specifically wanted more highlight just to create the natural look of the sun. So it started off like this. I had my Magmod now um, on a light stand held by my assistant here in the back. I had her pose here and I exposed for the value of her face. My, my kicker light in the back is about a stop or two over that of the proper exposure just to be able to get a nice flare in the back. So if you see it from here, from this angle, I had my two flash units already here and it's directed towards um, the back of her head. And at the same time, I cropped it with an 85 to make sure that I don't see any of the back of the, 
of the modifier from the back and this was the output there so this is the light that came from my artificial light all the light here is basically your natural light now you're, you're gonna ask why don't I just shoot with natural light because if I shot with natural light then I wouldn't have been able to get the colors in the background uh, the greens would have been so dead because the lighting was so flat um, it was a very very cloudy and gloomy day and it wouldn't have given this bright aura that's fitting their beauty so that's why I had to add that additional kicker light here and just one light really just transformed the entire scene so by the way these are the past winners from a beauty contest called Face of Beauty. Um, Pi, which is a 2019 winner or 2008 winner and, oh sorry, Pi was a 2017 winner, this is Pi. And the 2018 is this one, this was May. Now since I, I did Pi's headshots already, I decided to do May's. Now with May's I did something different as you will see now. With me, I still had the light in the back, I was shooting towards her, and I, I was shooting this one, I think, horizontally this time. And um, if you notice right here, you would see a different color inside, because the nice thing about this MagMod modifiers is that you could put a gel filter inside. So I put a CTO orange gel filter just to be able to get a bit more orange glow to the sun, to the fake sun that I was trying to create. So all these lights that you see here, all these highlights that you see were created by my artificial light. And then again, this was overexposed by one stop just to be able to get a bright, nice soft light on her face. And my light was probably about another stop or two over that of the existing ambient light. Okay. So that's how I would shoot outdoor and I did a few indoor shots with my um, Sony F45RM together with the MagMod Magbox and some gel filters. Then we decided, because we shot a bit later because uh, this was, we started shooting I think at about 3 o'clock if I'm not mistaken, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon thinking that we would get good sunsets in the area in which we were shooting. But of course we were unfortunate enough to get that but we were able to make do i think so we did this we then decided to shoot um outside the hotel because we were hitting blue hour now the key with blue hour the key to be able to bring out the blue skies during the time well for us it's about only they call it blue hour because in the western countries it does last an hour but here in the in the philippines where we stay the blue hour is only about 15 minutes, give or take, right after sunset and before, it's it 15 minutes right after sunset, give or take. So for me to be able to bring in that blue sky, I would now set, which is my light now, which is a Photix Nuanda R3. It's a beautiful circular LED light that you can control. That's actually the light that I'm using now for, for this video that you can control the color temperature. Now, why is that important? Because if you want the blues to be bluer, this is when we start playing around with the white balance. So instead of having my light on a proper, let's say at 5600, I would actually match that light to the existing ambient light here, which is tungsten, set my white balance for tungsten, therefore it will give more blue to the image, hence making the sky even more blue. So it's enhancing what is already there. So this is the Photix Nuada R3 here, and this is the output. So now my white balance is properly set for their skin tones and everything else is turned blue, but all those areas that are lit artificially by the existing ambient light, which is in the same color temperature as that of my R3 or as that of my Photix R3, then that would also become very neutral, okay? So now, we did another shot of that one, again, with the Photix Noir, the R3. I tried doing a wide shot, but I wasn't too happy with it, so I moved back, I put in my Zeiss 135, Zeiss Batis 135 2.8, to, to give a good compression of the background and to give them size. So this is the output, there we go. So from there, we decided to go inside again because we lost blue hour already. So that is done, like that is about 15 minutes. 
So I decided to shoot May um, again with my Photix, uh, no, sorry, this time with my MagMod again and the Sony F45RM. Ultra wide, 18 millimeter, just to bring in now the ceiling because there were very nice decorations in the ceiling. So for me to be able to have shot this image, I exposed for this one. That's why if you'll notice here, I am negative two, negative two and two thirds underexposed. So almost three stops underexposed, um, just to be able to control the highlights here. And uh, I shot it at 2.8, one over 500, so my flash was on high speed sync. Okay, so I guess you guys have been seeing a pattern here. I've been shooting everything on aperture priority because it just makes life so much faster. I'll make another video regarding why I shoot aperture priority, but you guys should try it, especially with the Sony cameras, when you could already see whatever it is that you're shooting because it's, um, it's, uh, it's on live view. Now, again, just to go back to this image, I exposed for the ambient light first before I added my flash. So the moment I dialed in my ambient light, which is this one, and I was happy with that, I popped the flash now and just fixed the flash power to balance it out. And lastly, after this one, we decided to shoot Pi one last time, but this time inside her bedroom. And I wanted to, to get a nice clean headshot again. And I had my Photix Noir the R3. This time, I think it there, you could see it here in the back. It was set as 5600 Kelvin. And it to serve as a backlight, similar to what we did earlier outdoors. So, but since we didn't have good natural light, I had now two Photix M180s. These are fantastic small lights, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful small lights. And I had them at a clam shaped, um, I put them um, in the form of a clam, the clam shaped lighting, and set it also at 5600 Kelvin in order for me to get nice beauty light here. And this one served as a nice kicker light. And here is the output. All right, so. Okay, so that's basically how we do it. We use speed lights indoor and outdoor, but at the same time, we could also use some nice continuous lights, especially when we're shooting in the evening. It's easier to control and very easy for us to see exactly what the light is doing. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. So if you guys haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. And if you want to see more of my images, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.